President Biden is working to put down a mutiny as a growing number of Democrat lawmakers and pundits urge him to end his campaign. And even one of President Biden's fiercest allies responded to questions about a plan B. It would seem to me that any one of these people who aspire uh, to be in president who would like to see a contest taking place, look at those 700 delegates who are now uncommitted and get into their action. And I do believe that all the delegates are permitted uh, only for the first round. And so you can actually fashion the process that's already in place to make it a mini uh, primary. And I would support that. Absolutely. We can't close that down and we should open up everything for the general elected. A spokesperson for South Carolina Congressman Jim Clyburn told Politico, quote, it is quite obvious that Congressman Clyburn was responding to a hypothetical question. He was not calling for a mini primary. Instead, he was explaining the existing process. The congressman fully supports President Biden at the top of the ticket, and it would be irresponsible to report anything otherwise. I owe Congressman and retired Air Force Officer Zach Nunn joins me now. Congressman, good morning to you. Happy Fourth of July. Okay, so you're colleague, Congressman Clyburn, he was responding to a hypothetical question there, and he has come out so far and said that he supports the Biden-Harris ticket. But now the idea of the mini primary is out there. Is that what it's going to come down to? And if so, what does that even look like? Well, Carly, happy Independence Day, and you're absolutely right. We're in a situation right now where we could end up with a Harris presidency, which I think is the only thing more frightening than a Biden presidency at this point. Look, when we get back to uh, Chicago 1968-style rules of what's happened for the Democratic Party, this is basically how they got Johnson out. You had a candidate who came out, uh, McCarthy, and opened up the field. Ultimately, Robert F. Kennedy was enough to make Johnson bow out from being the presidency. Clyburn's right, and Democrats are already saying this in Congress. They've spoken to me about this. Several of them think President Biden is no longer going to be the nominee. They're okay with that, and they're ready for President Trump to win. They want their shot four years from now. Mm -hmm. Look, the reality is, is that Harris is a danger to not only the Democratic Party, but would be a far worse leader in the White House. Tell us more about what Democrats are saying to you about this. Uh, would you say that swing state Democrats are the ones that are the most worried? Yeah, you know, I'm in a very competitive uh, district here in Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa. And even here, the Democrats who, you know, I've worked with, I've known for a long time, see red lights flashing everywhere. Not only do they lose the White House this go around, but they're going to lose down ballot races across the way. They're going to lose the Senate. They're going to lose the House. But they're going to lose state houses and governorships as well. You know, we saw President Biden on television for 90 minutes, and it frightened the entire country. But the reality is we've got this man trying to lead the greatest nation in the world for the next six months. That should scare everyone, regardless of party. This is a bipartisan concern for his health, yes, but also for the health of the entire country right now. Being under this man's watch is a danger to all of us. Yeah, you talk about those down ballot races, and that's that's really a big deal. And the recent polling that has come out shows that voter enthusiasm is down for President Biden. And if people don't turn out, if Democrats don't turn out to vote for him, they're not going to turn out to vote for the Democrat ticket down ballot as well. So that's where the major concern is, where the future of the Democratic Party is up in the air. And the White House is fielding questions about that. They say it's in Kamala Harris. Watch this. The president, and I know you will remember this, back yeah. in 2020, uh, referred to himself as a transition candidate. He also said back then that he would be a bridge to the next generation of Democratic leaders. Does he still believe that? Yes. I mean, I think his statement stands. I mean, one of the reasons why he picked the vice president, President Kamala Harris, is because she is indeed the future of the party. What do you think about that? Both the question and the answer there. I mean, a reminder that Joe Biden did say he was a bridge, which you know, would keep, you know, would make you think that he would be a one term president. Now he's going for two. And also that the White House feels like Kamala is the future. Well, let's be very clear here. The Biden administration is not running this show. It is a campaign decision being made at DNC headquarters. The reality is, is that, you know, the Democrats are going to have to have a conversation in their own home on what they want to do. And this Independence Day, we are seeing just fractures across the Democratic Party. 
It's happening both in Congress. It's happening certainly at the local level. And the question is going to be, is the Democratic Party going to be like the Republican Party and listen from the bottom up? Or is this going to be a mandate from the top down? I don't think that there are any Democrats who want a Biden presidency to give way to a Harrison presidency that we've already seen fail at the southern border, that has turned its back on middle America, that's resulted in inflation in my home state of $15,000 per family just these last three years alone. And it's completely failed in everything from Afghanistan to protecting our country mm -hmm. here domestically. Well, this would be a rubber stamp on the failed policies of the last four years. Well, Congressman, I, I know that you love this country, um, no matter what happens with the presidency. And I know that because you were just promoted to colonel in the Air Force. So congratulations on that achievement. You're serving both your constituents in Iowa and also our country militarily. What is your message this 4th of July? Well, I just want to thank all the incredible men and women who have taken up the call to serve their country in every capacity. But on this Independence Day, particularly the patriots who don the uniform, who are currently serving overseas right now, you know, no one gets to be in the military alone. This is a team effort, and it's a country first protection for those of us who are serving not only our communities, but our families straight away. Carly, there's a great two portraits in the uh, U.S. Capitol. The first is the signing of the Declaration of Independence the true patriots who on July 4th started the first chapter of our country. But directly at the end of that mural is then also a portrait of George Washington resigning his commission for that next generation of leaders. It's as true this independence as it was the independence that first began. We all are leaders in our own right, and we all must recognize the opportunity to both serve and then make sure we're bringing up that next generation of great leaders. This is something the president could be learning from right now just by walking down and seeing it how the U.S. Capitol is working today. That's a great message. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Happy 4th of July. Carly, always a privilege. Happy Independence, everybody. All right.